Welcome to a snowy Monday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. Consistent snowfall still continues across Detroit and all of southeast Michigan. It is treacherous out there. So when does this come to an end? How much will fall in total? We'll talk more about that in your full weather forecast first at four. All right, Andrew, plus a major blow for a face mask mandate on planes, trains and automobiles. We'll talk about a federal judge's decision. And here's Paula. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes, oh, baby. Wait till you see what a wedding costs these days. Plan like the 15 to 20 percent increase. We'll take you into what's shaping up to be a perfect storm. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. And we start with many of you under a winter weather advisory right now. It's going to last a few more hours. Uh, you can take a look outside top left of your screen there. You can see some of the snow our crews found covering the ground in Woodhaven. We've seen snow coming down most of the afternoon here in downtown Detroit. And we'll be tracking the radar very closely over the next few hours because of what is now a sloppy commute. And that's why meteorologist Andrew Humphrey uh, gets to bat lead off today. Hey, Andrew. Hey there, Jason. It's not only sticking to grassy surfaces, but also paved surfaces. So be careful out there on the roads. It is getting slushier by the minute, especially on untreated roads. You can see the snow still coming down quite heavily across parts of the area. We're nearly one to three inches fallen already. Here's some of those heavier snowfall areas. You can see that here in Livonia, also along uh, I-96, the Lodge, also I-75, closer to Oak Park and also Royal Oak. Zooming in a little bit closer here with, with uh, street level mapping. Here on Storm Tracker 4, Grand River is inundated. Same thing with Puritan and again West McNichols. So be careful on side streets, on highways, especially ramps, bridges, and overpasses. That's why we have a winter weather advisory. Sure, it's north of 8 Mile, but you still have to be careful south of 8 Mile. This one here is good until 7 o'clock for Oakland and Macomb counties. Farther north, it goes until 4 o'clock tomorrow morning because the snow is going to last there longer. Look at how much has fallen already. Two and a half inches over in Highland, just over an inch over in Romulus. We'll go over these snow totals and how much more is to come in minutes. And if you're going to be away from the TV tonight, don't forget you can download the local forecasters app. You can just scan that QR code that you see on your screen right there to find it or search WDIV in your app store. It's free. It's interactive. And with summer coming, one of my favorite things is it alerts you when lightning strikes wherever you're closest to. So go check it out. We also have some breaking news on a face mask mandate that covered planes, trains and other public transportation. A federal judge now in Florida has tossed out that mandate. The judge who was appointed by former President Donald Trump ruled the order exceeds the authority of federal health officials. She tossed the whole thing out because she says it was impossible to end it just for the people involved in the lawsuit. The CDC had just extended the order through May 3rd in order to study the impact of the BA2 Omicron variant, subvariant, I should say. At this hour, the U.S. Justice Department is not saying if it will appeal that ruling. We'll be live at Metro Airport with more reaction to the ruling on Local 4 News at 5. Three people are charged in a violent carjacking at a Warren gas station. Javon Oliver, Shakira Hayes and Michael McCall went before a judge this afternoon. Police say one of them shot a 38 year old woman three times as she pumped gas at the Sunoco gas station on eight mile near mound last week. Then they took her car. Oliver is charged with assault with intent to murder and all face carjacking and armed robbery charges. The victim is still in the hospital and is stable. A former employee of a Riverview business has now been charged in the shooting of his former boss. Prosecutors say Nathan Bottrell shot the owner last Thursday in the parking lot. Police say he then rode off on his bike but later surrendered at his apartment in Riverview. He now faces six charges, including aggravated assault with intent to commit murder. Bottrell was arraigned over the weekend and is being held on $150,000 cash bond. Well, you don't see this very often. That is the result of police chasing a school bus. It all started in Augusta Township in Washtenaw County just before 830 last night. It ended up with a crash in Canton Township. Investigators say a 26 year old man stole the bus from a locked yard at Lincoln Consolidated Schools. Police tried to stop him, but he kept going until he got to Canton Township where he ran a red light and rear ended a pickup. Everyone involved only has minor injuries. That suspect is behind bars. We'll have more on the why and the how tonight at five. Russia has aimed its missiles in a new direction, possibly trying to send a message to Ukrainians 
they are not safe no matter where they are. Analysts say the attacks are part of a coordinated plan now leading up to a big new offensive. Pamela Osborne joins us from the newsroom and Pam, Vladimir Putin is looking for a much needed victory here. That's right, Jason. Good afternoon. The Ukrainians have put up a much tougher fight than Russia expected when it launched this invasion at the end of February. Military analysts say it looks like Putin is launching attacks at key targets to soften Russian resistance as Russia prepares to take the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine. Today, Russian missiles hit the city of Lviv, killing at least seven people and injuring almost a dozen. That city is in western Ukraine and had only seen sporadic strikes until today. The city had become known as a safe haven for people from other parts of the country where the fighting has been more intense. A local governor says the attacks hit military infrastructure targets and a tire shop. The Russians would also like to take total control of the city of Mariupol, but we're told that Ukrainian forces are still defending the city, refusing to surrender. If Russia can win that city, it would free up forces to move toward the Russian-speaking region of Donbass. Moscow-backed separatists have been fighting there for eight years. Ukrainian officials are warning that the takeover of Mariupol could put an end to peace talks. Those talks, by the way, haven't really led to any concrete results, but it seems that we could be getting close to a big turning point in the Russian invasion. We'll have another update on the war on Local 4 News at 530. For now, I'll send things back to you, Jason. Yeah, that is a key battle. All right, Pam, thanks. New construction is going all American. The White House directing federal agencies to make sure new infrastructure projects are made with materials made in the U.S. Road repairs, bridges, water pipes, even broadband internet, all to be fully red, white, and blue. That's as long as those projects were paid for by the $1.2 billion infrastructure package. Waivers are allowed in certain situations. Well, here's an industry you haven't heard about suffering from rising inflation too much. Weddings. For some couples, it's a double whammy at this point, too. They postponed plans because of the COVID pandemic. And now this. Paula Tupman looks at what couples and their guests are facing. Tanya and Don are getting married in July by planning for a successful marriage, not just a wedding, but they are planning a wedding, too. And there have been some surprises. We have some meetings coming up to discuss florals. We know florals have gone up in cost. According to the Knot.com, the website that talks about all things weddings, in 2020, during the height of the pandemic, as venues shrank participation and public ceremonies were canceled, the national average cost for a wedding dropped to $19,000. By 2021, that cost had gone up to $28,000. And this year, with supply and demand issues, supply chain woes, gas prices, foreign wars, and inflation. When we were looking at uh, uh, reception venues, we were looking at some places that didn't have adequate staffing. Uh, transportation also, you know, gas prices have gone up, limousine prices have gone up. The average increase in everyday living costs has gone up. So, and then the manpower um, with staffing has gone down. Adele Weimer is a wedding planner with Everlasting Engagements, a full service wedding planning service. And she's got her finger on the pulse of all things weddings in Metro Detroit. Expect when you're budgeting and putting money aside for this or aside for that, um, plan like the 15 to 20% increases. If you're saying I want um, to spend, you know, 2,500 or 3,000 on decor, that may be more like 3,500 or 4,000. With shipping delays, brides should plan on a 12 month wait on some gowns instead of a nine month wait. Or think about cash and carry. That means finding a gown you can just take with you when you spot it and love it and it fits. Wedding guests, look around for those gifts wait for sales, or do a search engine search to find the best price. And when you see it, grab it. But most importantly, keep your eye on the prize, one another. We're planning for marriage. A wedding is a step there. And, and that's that's really what it is. It's just today, you know, we want to we want to make sure it's a nice day. Everybody's going to have a great time, but and we're planning for a marriage. Remember why the two of you chose to get married and maybe not put so much detail and money into something on the table that's only going to be there for a couple hours and then thrown it away.
So we've stepped inside the beautiful Bellissima Bridal Salon in downtown Rochester, and Anne, who does alterations, just gave me some great information. She said, also, go to a bridal salon and, and see if they're having a sample sale. See if there's something that you can cash and carry that way. Otherwise, she says, you know, it might take up to 12 months, depending on the gown. Weddings are to be planned, Jason, right? Planning, planning, planning. Go ahead and plan, but we're also hearing from our experts. Also, be flexible. These are times you may have to be flexible just because of the fluctuating prices. Oh Jason. Boy. And couples have been so flexible for so long. Yeah, keep it up. You'll get there. Paula, great story. Thank you. A fast food petition pays off. Thousands of people were unhappy when their favorite item was pulled from the menu. Well, now it's coming back. Power the people. That's on the way on Monday, as well as another major city mask mandate being challenged in court. You're getting it all first at four.